good virtual evening. Uh, my name is Bob Wesnewski, and I am the Director of Evangelization and Household Life here at Franciscan University. Uh, welcome to the Festival of Praise. Uh, festivals of Praise are a time where we are able to realign our hearts uh, to God through our praise, through our worship, to give the one who is actually worthy of our time and our attention and our heart um, our love. So I don't know where you're, uh, you're zooming in from here, but uh, in Steubenville here today, it's a pretty uh, gloomy day, you know, weather-wise. It's, uh, it's kind of gray out there. It's, it's rainy. Uh, it's been rainy all day. It's like 42. It's just, just kind of nasty. But at the same time, I was, I was walking outside this morning, and um, I, I noticed, like, there's, there's signs of spring all around. You know, the, our grass is really green. The trees are greening up. There's some blossoms on my, my peach tree. Um, the daffodils and some other bulbs are coming up in my backyard. And, but it's kind of weird, you know, juxtaposed with the gloominess, the cold, the grayness of, of today. And I think that's kind of where a lot of us find ourselves at in this weird time in history. You know, that a lot of us feel like there's a, there's a cloud kind of over top of us. Um, you know, we feel kind of gloomy, feel kind of stuck in this nastiness, but at the same time, if we look closer, there are signs of spring, and, uh, and that's where uh, we want to go tonight, you know, that the fact that we are going to come into an encounter tonight with God, and uh, if, if we're attentive, uh, we'll see that there are signs of spring, that there are signs of life and his love all around us. So at home, wherever you're at, we invite you to pray with us. Uh, we don't want you just to watch us praying. Uh, we want you to actually encounter all of us to encounter God together. God is bigger than um, where exactly we're at. Um, he wants uh, to do something beautiful. He wants to bring spring in this moment here tonight. And so uh, with that, I'm going to ask John Paul and the, the band to uh, start us off with some worship. Lord Jesus, we praise your holy name. We thank you for the gift of life. Jesus, we praise you for the gift of worship. Lord, we ask you to please be present to everyone here, everyone uh, tuning in virtually tonight. You are not limited, Lord, uh, by uh, our ability to, our inability to gather in big gatherings as we're so accustomed to. Lord, you are present in each one of our hearts. Lord, please manifest your power in a powerful and obvious way to us tonight. Lord, please usher in your peace, your joy. Lord, we come to you with grateful hearts as children who have great need of you, Lord. We praise you. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. Judah, 
He's roaring with power in fighting our battles in every Because he lives, I 
have had um, you know, we've been displaced from maybe the norm certain things that uh, we would normally be doing um, without this uh, pandemic and the quarantine and all that kind of stuff but um, one of the groups that I know uh, for a lot of us here Franciscan um, our hearts are a little broken for is our, our graduating seniors you know uh, anyone who's had a senior whether it's high school college whatever it's it's a it's a tough time to finish off without having some of that closure and this weekend was actually a real special weekend. It was a graduating weekend for our seniors um, before all this started. Tonight was actually going to be the baccalaureate, ma baccalaureate mass um, for those seniors. And so it's kind of neat that we're doing this because there's, there's, there's a, I feel like, a significant encounter with God. We can lift them up in a special way. But uh, in a special way, we want to honor them tonight by just... We asked two, two seniors to share uh, just a little bit with us tonight, and so uh, I'm excited to introduce to you uh, those seniors. Our first one we have is Maria Salamita. She is a graduating um, HCC, which is Humanity and Catholic Culture uh, major, and uh, she's a Salamita, so you know she's awesome. Um, but she's going to share a little bit with you, so Maria. Hi, everybody. Um, so, as Bob said, my name is Maria Salamita, um, and yeah, I was supposed to graduate, um, or at least have commencement this weekend officially, um, but Bob just asked me to share a little bit about, um, just what I've experienced and what the Lord has done in this time. Um, yeah, um, so I think the biggest thing was that yeah, I had all these expectations about how my semester was going to end, um, what was going to happen, you know, I mean, everything, pretty much, <laughs> um, you know, whether it was school or time with friends or um, what have you, but I think the biggest thing that I came face to face with was my, that I'm not in control, um, and kind of came face to face with that yeah, I thought I was in control of a lot of things that are really only God's to take care of. Um, and he really spoke this truth into my heart that um, what I had control over was today and tomorrow, if I woke up and the next day, you know, as he would give them to me. And it kind of just brought me to a whole new um, level or way that I started praying every day. Um, is every day I started praying, okay, Jesus, how can I love you today? Please love me today, you know? Um, how can I use the gift of today to, to best honor you and serve you? Um, yeah, and just really brought me to this new place of abandonment and surrender to the Lord. Um, but obviously that wasn't super easy. Um, but I feel like a lot of seniors probably could relate to that. Um, but in the midst of that, the other 
the other side of that was that in that lack of control, um, I didn't have, you know, the constancy of the sacraments. Like, the sacraments had always been such a constant in my life source of refuge, and um, to particularly not have those was such a, just such a difficulty and such a cross. Um, but even in that, like, the Lord really found me and brought me to this new place um, of learning how close he actually is um, in the day-to-day um, and just finishing school and being with my family. Um, and yeah, I think that um, whatever uncertainties lie in the future for me or for whoever's listening that's a senior, um, yeah, that he is with us and that he is near. Um, and I just wanted to read um, a psalm that has been super hitting me very deeply. Um, It's Psalm 23. (laughs) And before this time, Psalm 23 was kind of like a sentimental psalm, like, oh, that's nice, you know. Um, But it just really cut me to the heart, and it's been a huge rock for me. So I just want to read that. Um, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Um, Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Maria. Uh, Next up, I'd like to bring up Joe Young. Joe is a, a graduating theology and catechetics major, also known as the Theocat, lovingly around here. Um, He's someone that I'm so excited to leave this place, not because I don't like him, but because I am just so excited to see what he does in the world. He's He's a powerful man of God, and he's also a really good dancer. So here's Joe. Thanks, Bob. Um, Yeah, and thanks, Maria. Thanks for sharing. That was really beautiful. Um, Yeah, this time of this whole coronavirus thing where we've uh, been, uh, everything's been stripped from us, I feel like. So uh, I was on uh, a mission trip during spring break when I got the email that um, we would have an extended spring break. Um, And very soon we realized that that was going to turn into uh, our senior semester being cut short. And that was really hard. That was really tough. And during that same time, I also got a phone call from a dear friend of mine um, sharing with me the news that this mission trip to Russia, which I was really looking forward to, was also canceled. Um, And so I kind of felt like Job, where things that were very dear to me were stripped away. Um, and that was really tough. But I started, I, I had a great conversation with one of my friends, um, Robbie Simon, and uh, we were talking about Job. And he shared that, you know, God took things away from Job in order to bless him. Right? So God stripped things away in order to bless him. And uh, that really gave me new eyes to look on this time. And that's kind of what I want to share right now, is just that this whole time has been one of blessing. First, um, one one of the blessings that that the Lord has given me during this time is uh, so much quality time with my family. I love my family a ton. Um, I have seven siblings, and I... God willing, I'm going to be joining, uh, entering religious life next year. Um, and 
leaving them pretty much for the rest of my life. <laughs> Not to be dramatic or anything. So, like, with, for, with uh, classes being put online, the Russia mission being canceled, now I, had fi- I have five months with them. And it's just been amazing. There have been all of these moments with different siblings. Like, for example, last night, um, or two, two evenings ago, uh, me and some of my brothers went on a bike ride, uh, and we found this, like, this trail that was made for, uh, uh, like, uh, motorbikes. I forget what those are called. Um, <laughs> but it was sweet. It was awesome. Like, it was all muddy, and it was completely quiet. It was in the woods, and the wind was blowing, and the trees were creaking, and there was all these flowers, and so the air was just very potent of uh, flowers. And it was this beautiful time with my brothers, something that I wouldn't have had if I was back here on campus. And there have been so many of these moments with my family, uh, which has just been very, very beautiful and a blessing. So even though the Lord has stripped away, for example, friends here at the university, he's given me this great blessing of time with my family. Um, Second, this time back home has been one of healing. Um, All of us, right, are wounded, uh, myself included. And some of those wounds for me have been received in the home. But uh, this time, this intentional time of quarantine, of being in the home, um, has been one of healing uh, for me, where I haven't been able to run away from those insecurities or those wounds, but I've had to face them. And the Lord's been there, the Lord's been present. Just like Maria said, the Lord is present, He is our shepherd. And uh, it's been a tremendous time of healing um, for me. So praise God for that. I mean, I'm just reminded of what Job said, that the Lord has given and the Lord has taken away, but blessed be his name. So uh, I just, I pray that this time of uh, praise and worship, which we're so blessed to have, um, is a time for us to, one, recognize those blessings in our life um, and give God the praise for those, and then, two, uh, to ask the divine physician, Jesus, to touch our wounded hearts. We're going to begin our time of adoration now. Praise you, Jesus. Spirit, I will rise 
from the ashes of defeat the resurrected king is resurrecting me in your name i come alive to declare your victory the resurrected king is resurrecting me and by your spirit i will rise from the ashes of defeat the Jesus, we come into your presence this evening and we recognize that you are the resurrected one, that you are the anointed one, that you are the holy one. And as Maria said during her witness, that you are always present and you are always close. So Jesus, even at this moment, I ask your Holy Spirit to fall upon all those who are with us this evening, whether they be in their home, their car, wherever they find themselves tonight, Jesus. So I just invite everybody to just take a moment and stop and be still and be quiet and ask God to be present to you. Lord Jesus, your Holy Spirit falls upon your people tonight. Come, Lord Jesus. And Lord, we give you this next several minutes just to be able to worship you. If you're home and it's difficult for you to pray or to sing when you're at home, then just get comfortable and let the music ministry minister to you and just ask God's Holy Spirit to come to you. Come, Lord Jesus. Let your glory now. 
That's our prayer, that the resurrected King would resurrect us. Jesus said, when we were baptized, we were baptized into your death and resurrection. And while so many things have been taken away from us over the last many weeks and months, never your grace, never the power of your resurrection, never the power of hope. Jesus, I pray for an outpouring of the resurrection, the grace and the power of the resurrection to fall upon this world to fall upon our church, Lord, who in many ways for the last eight or 10 weeks has been sleeping, has been dormant, has been isolated, and is ready to come out, Lord. Is to ready to rise with you, Lord Jesus, to rise in your power and in your glory and in your anointing. Jesus, we pray for that grace to fall upon us at this very moment, that the resurrected one is resurrecting us. So in the name of Jesus, that you'd bring us out of our tombs, that you'd bring us out of our graves, that you would bring us out of our fear, that you would bring us out of our anxiety, that you'd bring us out of our pain. Resurrect us, Jesus, with you. For death has no power over you. Death has no power over your might and your glory. Come with your power, Jesus, and resurrect us. Resurrect us, Lord Jesus. of defeat the resurrected king is resurrecting me in your name I come alive to declare your victory the resurrected king is resurrecting me and by your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat the resurrecting me in your name I come alive to declare your victory the resurrected king is resurrecting me the resurrected king is resurrecting me the resurrected king is resurrecting
craving more of you Send your spirit to touch every heart I've been praying with over the, this time of pandemic is just the reality that the Lord wants to be close to us and that he's going to look for us and he's going to search for us until he finds us and he ultimately wants to reveal that he's always loved us and he's never stopped loving us and in Romans we hear what will separate us from the love of Christ will anguish or distress or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or the sword, or a pandemic, or COVID. As it is written, for your sake we are being slain all the day. We are looked upon as sheep led to the slaughter, but know in all of these things we conquer overwhelmingly him who has loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor power, nor height, nor depth, nor any creature will be able to separate us from the love of God, which comes to us through Christ Jesus our Lord. And Lord, this evening we just stand on that word that there is nothing that can separate us from your love. In whatever the circumstances that we find ourselves, that you have loved us and you have rescued us, and you have shown yourself to us. And Jesus, the grace is available to us, and, and by your grace and by your anointing, we are coming out of this pandemic. But allow us, Lord, to receive the grace that you had for us during this time. As Joe was saying in his sharing that it's been a time of blessing, and there may be some that it, that's not been your case. 
but it's not too late to receive a grace and anointing to receive your love in the midst of this. For nothing, Lord Jesus, can separate us from your love. So we pray that we would know and stand on the word that we are more than conquerors. That this virus, the economic issues, the losing jobs, the being furloughed, nothing will separate us, Lord, from your love. Come to us, Lord Jesus.
singing that Jesus you are present here and that's true no matter where you are and without being weird or strange I just invite you to maybe just even just very simply very quietly just say that to yourself wherever you are Jesus you are present here and as we were worshiping I had this image of churches all across the country and across the world and they were empty and in each one of those churches there was a tabernacle and there was a sense among some that Jesus is trapped in there but we are a people of faith and we are a people who live in the Eucharist even if we can't receive and just as I saw the churches, this light emanated from every tabernacle in the world and in the churches in your church. And it just began to go out the doors of the church and through your streets and through your parks and into your home, this light that just pervaded the entire country. And he is present to us. And he desires to come to us and to minister to us. Jesus, you are present here. Lord Jesus, make yourself known. Jesus, Jesus, you are present here. Alive, 
the shadows can't deny your name can I be overcome your name is alive forever lifted high your name it cannot be overcome oh your name is a light that the shadows can't deny your name it cannot be overcome jesus your name is a light forever lifted high your name it cannot be overcome Jesus and Jesus Jesus you make the darkness tremble Jesus Jesus you silence fear and Jesus Jesus you make the darkness tremble Jesus Jesus you're present you're present here my Jesus it's difficult for us to believe the Lord is present. Let's take a moment or two and invite Jesus to be present. I was talking to somebody and they were struggling with really understanding or believing that the Lord would be present in the midst of all the difficulties that have gone in the last couple of days and weeks. But if the Lord is present in a bloody crucifixion, he can be present in our mess. If the Lord can be present in the midst of the sin of his disciples and their betrayal, he can be present in this. So we're just going to take a moment or two and ask the Lord to be present in those places that you can't imagine he would actually go. For those of you who are struggling and and just really questioning and, and doubting God and where are you in the midst of all this. Invite him to be present in that. For those of you who have struggled with isolation and despair in the midst of this, the Lord is present in that. Invite him to be present. Jesus, be present in the midst of our fear. Jesus, be present in the midst of our disappointment. Jesus, be present in the midst of our doubts. Be present in the midst of our not knowing. Invite him into that place that you can't imagine Jesus would be. In your struggle with alcohol, in your struggle with, struggle with anger. Jesus, be present in the midst of addiction. Be present in the midst of struggling with pornography, with lust. Jesus, you are present. You are alive. And just by your word, you bring freedom. Just by your presence, darkness scatters. So what are those things this evening that you need to invite Jesus into? Those things you're ashamed of things you're afraid of, the things that you don't talk to anybody about. Jesus, be present. Come, Lord Jesus.
grace right now that you would silence just the things that go through our head, that go through our mind that just aren't true. 
Do you silence the lie that says we're not enough, the lie that says we're a failure? You silence that in your name, Jesus. The lie that says that we are alone, nobody sees, nobody knows, nobody cares. Jesus, silence that lie. The lie that says we'll never be right, the lie that says you are not faithful, the lie that says we're fundamentally flawed, silence that lie, Lord. Jesus, come with your truth. Silence the lie of anger and lack of forgiveness. The lie that says you could never forgive or you never would forgive or you never will forgive. Silence that lie, Jesus. Jesus, come with your light. Come with your truth. Speak to our heart that your voice and your truth would be louder than the lie. Silence the darkness. Come, Lord. Yeah, Jesus. Speak a word of truth to our hearts. Silent the word, silent the lie of discouragement and despair. Silence the voice of shame. take a moment or two and intercede for those who are in most need right now. In the last probably eight, eight or ten weeks, there have been several friends of mine who have had loved ones die that have not been able to have a proper funeral. A couple of them were not be able to be with their loved ones. And Jesus, we just lift you up all of the families who have been impacted from death over the last many weeks. Jesus, just draw them close to your heart. 
Let them know your comfort. Let them know they're not alone. Jesus, free some of those who feel guilty. Lord, just be present to them. Jesus, we pray specifically for all those who will be graduating, those from Franciscan University who are supposed to graduate this weekend but will graduate in August. But for the students all across the country, high school, college, and graduate students who just all of their plans have really been thrown up in the air, that you would bring your peace. Jesus, we pray for those graduates who were now looking for jobs that are anxious about what the future holds. We pray for them that they would know your peace, that you'd open the door, that you show them the path to walk. Take away fear and anxiety. Jesus, we pray for families who have struggled in this time. Families who are struggling financially, struggling with anxiety, struggling with mental illness. Jesus, be present to them. We pray for those who have cared for us, that you'd bless them, bless their efforts, bless their families, the sacrifice that they've made. Jesus, I pray for priests and bishops who in the last many weeks have just been asked to do and not be able to do things that they just never imagined, that you'd be present to them. Jesus, we pray for the church as we begin to get life back to normal, that we will have not wasted the grace that's been available to us. Jesus, come with your spirit. So just take a moment before we have Tonto Mergo, and what is it specifically that you want to pray for tonight? for these prayers in your most holy name. You have given them bread from heaven. O oh God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us the memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in our lives the fruits of your redemption. You who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
pray the divine praises. Just repeat after me. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be your holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be your holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be your glorious assumption. Blessed be your glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God and his angels and in his saints. Blessed be God and his angels and in his saints.
Thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's been absolutely a pleasure to serve you all. And you're in our prayers, and be assured of, uh, of our support for you guys in our prayers um, at all times through the midst of this crisis. Thank you so much for tuning in.